So we, we will have a session on cyber physical energy systems, modeling and control. The session will have uh, six presenters, six, six speakers of six papers. And the papers are uh, somehow on, on different aspects of the problem. So we have two papers on privacy preserving issues. We have two other papers on, on uh, attack detection and false data, false data injection attack detection. And two other that are on control issues. And, 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 and we'll start by one of these. Uh, so the first speaker uh, will be uh, Dr. Kin Su. Uh, Dr. Kin is with the National uh, Sun Yasen University in Taiwan. I hope I, 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 I told them the name correctly. So his main, yeah. his main, his main research interests include um, control and optimization methods for renewable integration, power system flexibility and resilience. So, uh, Dr. King, the floor is yours. You have 15 minutes. If you, if you approach the 15 minutes, I, I, will, I will give you a sign. Otherwise, I will let you finish and then we'll have five minutes for Q&A. Okay? Okay, the floor. good. Thank you. Yeah, okay. So, can you see the, uh, the, my slides? Yes. Okay, uh, cool. So, uh, thank you for coming. And uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, this is a joint work with my student, Marcio, and um, with a, also with a coll collaborator, Professor Henrik Sandberg at KTH in Sweden. And the title uh, is the Minimum Time Secure Rollout of Software Updates for Controllable Power Loans. Okay, um, in our work, we consider power distribution systems with potentially many inverter connected loads and DGs as shown in this figure. And uh, smart inverters maintain connection point voltage by adjusting its injections. And the um, Q and V adjustments typically follows a volt wire control law as shown in here. And uh, the parameters of the control law, and in fact, the control software may need to be updated due to operating condition changes, discovered cyber threats, and so on. So the main problem uh, of our work is the scheduling of software updates for all inverters in the system. And uh, our main problem is called a software update rollout problem, as we see in this title. We envision the scheduling of software updates of potentially many smart inverters. We wish to minimize mix band, meaning the time difference between the first and the last updates we do so because the updates may fail and this pose a security risk. In our problem, we impose what we call the N minus N security constraint, being that the system should work according to our definition, even if all updates failed. And we'll talk about later what it means for working. And finally, we require the scheduling decision should be made quickly for adaptive online applications. And next, uh, we will formulate our main problem and discuss the solution methodology. Okay. Uh, we adopt a linearized disk flow model to describe power flows in the system, leading to a linear QV relations like this. Okay. And uh, we assume the software update failure at any single bus would cause voltage disruptions for all buses in the system. The duration of the disruption is called tau. And we think of tau as an upper bound of fault clearing time. We quantified the voltage disruption seen by bus I due to update failure at bus J as H sub IJ. For example, the update failure at this bus J will cause voltage disruptions for all buses in the system, including the, these two highlighted in blue. On the right, we can see uh, the voltage disruptions versus time for all three buses that we just mentioned. Voltage disruptions start at time TJ here, and last for 12 seconds. <clears throat> and the amount of 
disruptions that are described uh, are by this corresponding entries of this edge. Okay. If there are more than one update failures, the voltage disruption simply add up linearly. This is because of our adopted linear disk flow model. Now we present the mathematical optimization model of our software update rollout problem. The objective is to minimize and expand. The N minus N security constraint specifically means that even in a worst case scenario where all updates fail, the total voltage disruption should not exceed the limit at all buses and at all time. This optimization problem in here, um, uh, and actually the MSN, the objective is to minimize the mix band as we said in here. And the constraint here is the N minus N constraint. And uh, this optimization problem is non-smooth and non-linear, which is difficult to solve directly. So in our work, we derive effective solution methodologies based on a reformulation that we'll describe next. First, we observe that the scheduling problem is time slotted in that the optimal update times can be assumed to be integer multiples of tau. And remember that tau is our universal fault clearing time. The intuition is that we can always run down the update times to obtain a better solution candidates as explained in this figure. So we can like move this to snap this to the grid basically. And our time slot observation enables us to turn the original scheduling problem into a finite discrete optimization problem. This can be approached by solutions methods such as 3D algorithms, integer linear programming, and so on. We can also reinterpret the scheduling problem as a variant of the bin packing problem that we call multi-resource bin packing in here. Fixing the update times to integer multiples of tau can be thought of as assign updates time slots as illustrated in this figure, where we actually pack uh, 40 updates into six time slots. Yeah. Our scheduling problem is then to pack all updates using the minimum number of time slots, just like packing items in the minimum number of bins. And the N minus N security constraint is simply like we cannot overload the bins with too many heavy items. And we call our problem multi-resource with a budget bin packing problem because we have more than one bus that we need to enforce the voltage limits. In this example here, we will have actually 40 buses uh, that has this limit, but it's, we're just showing one in here. Right. The bin packing problem is classical with many well-known heuristic algorithms such as first fit descent or best and best fit descent that we call FFD or BFD for short. And in our work, we make a slight modification to these algorithms for our multi-resource case. These heuristic algorithms turns out to be very effective for our applications as we'll see in our case study, which we'll show later. We also use integer linear programming to model our multi-resource multi bin packing problem as shown in this slide in here. Branch and bound is the standard solution algorithm for this problem as, we, as it is available in Groovy and, and CPLAX, which is free for us. Um, we propose to augment the integer program with valid equations and valid inequalities, and here highlight some of them that we actually customize for our application. And these extra constraints cut out redundant solution space to speed up the branch and bound solution process. Our case study indicates the effect of this extra constraint is quite dramatic as we'll see at the end of this talk. Next, we discuss our case study using the secret volley bus system shown in this figure. And in this case, we, sh we assume all 40 buses have smart inverters requiring software updates. We solve different instances of our scheduling or what we call bean packing problem with different values of H. And remember that H is the matrix describing this voltage disruptions. 
And we do this to examine the effect of different levels of seriousness of update failure. Basically, the larger action, the more serious it is. And this figure shows the update schedule obtained by solving our proposed energy program. So in total, six time slots are needed to schedule this all 40 uh, updates. If we instead simply sequentially schedule the updates and 40 time slots will be needed, which is much more. And this figure shows the decomposition of voltage disruptions contributed by all buses to this bus 40, bus 40. As we can see, our schedule satisfies voltage limit for bus 40 for all time slots. Yeah. And the limit is 1% of one per unit. In fact, the voltage limit for all buses are observed as verified, but we cannot show it here. And this figure shows the number of times lost used by our schedules versus the seriousness of update failure. And the blue bars in here corresponds to the schedules by the greedy heuristics like FFT or BFD, while the red bars in here are obtained by solving our proposed energy program. As voltage disruptions get larger, um, it becomes more difficult to fit the updates in the time slots. So we need more time slots as indicated by this figure, yeah, the growth. Also, we can see that the greedy heuristics is actually quite accurate. It's very accurate, we will say, but we should emphasize that in general, not much optimality guarantee can be set for these heuristics while we can actually have guaranteed for the, uh, with the indigent program. And this table shows the computation times in seconds corresponding to the figures we just saw in the previous slide. The first column in here shows the time for the greedy heuristics and we can see that it's very fast. And the second column here is for the energy programming with our proposed valid constraints. It's fast enough for our applications, but it's not as fast as the heuristics in comparison. And third column here is also energy programming, but the proposed valid constraints are excluded. As you can see from these later cases, the valid constraints are indeed necessary and make a difference. Okay. In summary, today we presented a new power system scheduling paradigm for massive software updates like scheduling with what we call this N minus N security constraint. The problem in this original form is complicated, but we can reformulate it as a multi-resource bin packing problem, which leads to efficient solution approaches such as reading heuristics and the energy programming. And we customize some valid constraints to speed up the energy programming approach, which turns out to be quite effective as we see. Um, when properly done, these software update decision problems can be solved real quick for real-time applications. And so that's it uh, for my talk. And thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I suspect we don't have questions. At least they, they don't show up in my, in my, in my screen. Okay. So, so if, if, there are no, if, if there are no questions, no, I, I think I can, I can make kind of a comment or, or, or no, actually I can make one question. Oh, okay, okay. okay. So, Matt, so yep. Actually, okay. I, I worked previously in the constraint programming community. So I'm just wondering what yeah. sort of ordering techniques you use for the CP model? What's this ordering techniques? Uh, oh, uh, first of all, I need to say that I'm not an expert in that. So I just use default options, okay? And uh, from the CP. Because my general intuition with CP is that there's a lot of tuning parameters and- Yeah, probably, probably, points. yes. Uh, yeah. We just use whatever default options, okay? And okay. Uh, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, po it's, it's possible that um, it will be faster. So, uh, yeah. Yep. 
Okay, Keen, we have we have a question here from Adonis. Okay. Uh, so I will read it out loud. So okay. it's, it, it says that, can you please clarify yeah. how software updates affect voltage levels? Sorry if I misunderstand. Uh, how the software affect the voltage level. So we basically have like a, the disco model basically relates to voltage uh, with the like uh, PQ injections. And so, uh, and the PQ injections, we basically assume that if the sort of software update fails and it just inject the maximum amount of possible uh, PQs. And that maximum amount, it depends on the applications. Does that answer your questions? His questions or her <laughs> questions? Yeah. yeah. I think he cannot, he cannot answer to your question, but, but I, I, can, I can put another question because we, sure. still, have, we still have time. So yeah. uh, oscillations, what are those oscillation and other effects on, and, and, and other interactions? are usually local, right? So wh why, don't you, why don't you take a, a decomposition approach that takes locality into consideration? So like in a radial network, you, you could do that feeder by feeder. Did, did you consider that? Uh, we, we actually have not uh, considered that. And uh, I mean, we just try it with the entire systems and with the default model. And um, so, uh, and it turns out that we can solve this problem very relatively quickly. And so uh, at the moment, we did not think that it's very necessary to even speed that up, but it's always good to be faster. So we can look into that, I suppose. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was I was just curious. Okay. Yeah. So, Keen, uh, thank you uh, yeah. for the nice presentation. And if there are no other questions, we will move to the next speaker. Can you stop sharing your your screen? Sure. Please, Keen. Thank you.